Good morning, Bobbies. Welcome back to another episode of The Sage. We hope you've kicked off the new and final trimester of the school year right. On this show, we have a feature on the popular new game, Mortal. An informative piece about summer jobs. A feature on Baboa Park's Cherry Blossom Festival. And a look into the girls' soccer celebrations. Hey, Nadia, have you gotten the word for today? Not yet, but I plan on doing so after this feature story on Wordle by reporter Austin Jew and opinion editor Nancy Huangball. Let's send it over. Wordle, it's that viral word game where players have six chances to guess a random five letter word, and recently it's gained popularity amongst people of all ages around the world, even being played by students during class. But why do people find it so addicting? We asked a variety of students and staff to get their opinion on the game and why they play it. I play Wordle because it's just kind of a fun game, and I think the, uh, like social aspect of it is really drawing to me and like other people because you get to compare it to your friends and be like oh I beat you or I did better than you. A lot of my friends started playing it and I felt like I was missing out if I didn't play it and also it's just kind of interesting to see how well I can do against my friends because I'm dyslexic so it's a little bit of a challenge. It's a nice challenge it's like you don't always win and it requires a lot of brain power and it's just like fun to kind of exercise your brain in a different way. It gets your mind thinking uh, you get to learn some cool words as well. And also, um, I win every time, so like it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not getting any younger, and so it's really good for your mind to have little puzzles and stuff to do, so. And it's fun! So why is Wordle so popular? Well, I suppose it's easy to understand and quick to play, so the fact it's not only just a good brain teaser, but also a convenient social source makes it easy to talk and joke about. And it stands out from other word puzzles like crossword puzzles or scrabble, since it's a very quick daily activity compared to other games that require more time and effort. Unless you happen to be really bad. We also made a Wordle for you guys to try out, so here's the QR code. Anyway, leaving to do today's Wordle, this has been Nancy Huang Ball and Austin June. Now back to the anchors. Looks like a lot of fun, guys. Wordle isn't the only fun to be had. Why not get a job while you're at it? Reporter Tamiris Gumar gives us the rundown of everything on why and how to get a summer job. Let's see what Tamiris has for us. Although summer is associated with beach and travel, it is also a time for gaining real-world experience outside the classroom. It is an opportunity for many high schoolers who are now legally allowed to get a job. Some of the good things about working during the summer is just like you have more time, you know. It's a good idea to start making money you know just saving it and just to have money to support yourself to get things that you want you could save up for students um in the summertime it's very crowded here so you're making a lot more commission you're definitely making a lot more money because people are buying more things in the summertime too it's very chill environment it's a lot of fun the workers here have a lot of fun in the summertime interacting more with people there's more people to interact with and make more money off of that However, students may face some challenges along the way. I think the biggest thing is that students want to get the permit signed before they get the job, but actually you go and look for the job, which is probably more time consuming than getting the worker's permit signed, but find a job that you're interested in and get hired by an employer and then bring the worker's permit back to Mrs. Ruby for her signature. The job market itself can also be difficult to navigate, though opportunity awaits for those willing to make an effort. Perfect employee would be definitely outgoing, uh, like I said, super hard working, just always on top of everything, and again, like I said, number one is customer service, so someone that's always putting the customers before them and doing whatever they need to help them out, and someone who's kind. This has been Tamiris Gumar reporting for The Sage. Wow, I think I might actually try to get a job this summer. Sure you will. <laughs> Most definitely. But before summer comes the lovely time of spring in San Diego. Here's staff reporter Benz Lopez and Leo and Brogley with more on Balboa Park's Cherry Blossom Festival. This past weekend, the Japanese Friendship Garden at Balboa Park held their annual Cherry Blossom Festival. Traditional music and food accompanied the blossoms. The garden's executive director, Luan Kanzawa, believes in the power of celebrating culture. Every time we celebrate this, the festival, we invite over 26 organizations, vendors and nonprofits. Either they perform, or they sell food, or merchandise, but it's bringing the community of San Diego together. Just In addition to being recognizable emblems of Japan, the cherry blossoms also symbolize change and new beginnings. Sage Creek alumni Shino Saito from the city of Kamakura, Japan, tells us about the general Japanese high schoolers' perspective. Hanami is like the way Japanese people celebrate of the spring with the like friend or family, whoever you like. So the season of the cherry blossom means like graduation, saying goodbye to your friend, or like meeting a new friend. 
We asked Alex Horn, who is in charge of visitor engagement, education, and volunteering, what the cherry blossoms personally represented. I guess for me, it would represent new experiences and just opening your eyes to new adventures and new heights. In Japan, they believe in um, enjoying every moment. So they're saying there's a balance. So beauty doesn't last long, it goes away. If there's happiness, there's sadness. If there's good, there's bad. So while you have this beautiful tree, <laughs> as the wind blows off these uh, beautiful petals into the sky, you have to enjoy it. You know, you only have two weeks while it lasts. Wow, it's beautiful down at the Cherry Blossom Festival. I'll have to check it out. Definitely a gem in San Diego. To wrap up the show, let's hear from sports editor Nick Sepek and assistant web editor-in-chief Cooper Hancock about all the girls' soccer team has accomplished this season. Um, winning back-to-back -back CIF championships was a huge accomplishment because, first of all, it has never been done before. Also, coming in the second year, we were seen as the underdogs, and it, it felt nice to prove everyone wrong. It just really shows how much we've grown as a team over the years. Um, my freshman year, we won like three games total, and then we won two back-to-back -back CIF um, championships in my junior and senior year, so I think it's just really cool to see how far we've come. Not many teams get to experience winning a CIF, so winning back-to-back -back is just a lot, and it's super exciting. A loss against West High School in the semis officially ended their season. Coach McQueen describes what the mood was following the loss. It initially, it was like heavy, um, just because I think there was just so emotion, so much emotion and just energy and effort leading up to it. We had just been playing games back to back for like, oh gosh, like 15 weeks almost. Like it, we huddled as a team together in a circle right on the field, like right after we lost. And we just started sharing our, our favorite memories about the season and just how long it's been starting like beginning of November, like everything we've got to accomplish and do. And there was tears and laughter and it was just an all around just wholesome experience just to, to say like this group of girls, this team that we'll never have again, just, you know, accomplish such a, a big, yeah, feat. This has been Cooper Hancock and Nick Sepek reporting for The Sage. Wow, what an awesome season. Make sure to support Madeline Mack's Genius Project this week by donating a used Bobcat Spirit gear back to the school. The donation drive will take place Thursday and Friday this week from 8 to 8.30 in the Circle drop-off area. The donated Spirit gear will be resold next year at a discounted price to promote sustainability and accessibility to Spirit gear for all CHS students. That's all we have for today, Bobbies. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to check out our, web our website for the latest stories. And follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at The Sage Publication. This has been Naughty Razak. Enjoy Delicia. Reporting for The, the Sage. Sage.